Really good thread from Carlos Osuita. Here's a fascinating 2015 profile of Donald Trump. It shows how absolutely blind the press is and how easily he fools them. The secret is to make people underestimate him. From Politico, what I learned writing Trump's biography. The writer of the piece, Michael D'Antonio, co-author of the book Never Enough, Donald Trump and the Pursuit of Success, didn't do any research on Trump. So he was fooled. Even so, he didn't take to heart what he did know about Trump. There's only one reason that he didn't. He thought that he wasn't susceptible to Trump's strategy, so he blithely walked into a trap. I've researched Trump down to the cellular level. Therefore, if I ever met him, I would take all my cues from him. Here's what people don't get. He's playing for the highest stakes there ever were. And he, like me, writes people off instantly. You can't expect someone like that to drop everything and spill his guts to you. Almost everyone is ambitious, so they have personal and or partisan agendas. Trump simply gives back what he gets. My only goal in meeting him would be to thank him. But on to the political profile. Quote, Trump famously avoids discussing the past, resists self-analysis, and is doggedly committed to the image he has constructed. End quote. A major blunder right there. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Sun Tzu, The Art of War. Trump does nothing but self-analysis. In 1984, he said his lifestyle was cute, but meaningless. New York Times article, 1984, The Expanding Empire of Donald Trump. Audio version of that also available on this channel. But back to the Politico piece, quote, but anyone who knows Trump well and has followed him through his decades of fame knows Donald Trump is never just what you see on the surface. End quote. The media doesn't know that the surface Trump is not the real Trump. Back to Politico. As often as not, he keeps his true intentions to himself. And if his latest skirmish with Fox News is any indication, he is still a few steps ahead of everyone else. In two instances, when he spoke on the record, Trump veered from a general discussion of success to an evaluation of the president. Remember, this is 2015. Obama was president. First, he said Obama lacked the qualities of a winner and has had so many losses and people don't even want to watch him on television. In the second, he said the president was not psychologically tough. It's all psychology. If Obama had that psychology, Russia's Vladimir Putin wouldn't be eating his lunch. He doesn't have that psychology and he never will because it's not in his DNA. End quote. This was in the days when the press was still sane enough to laugh at the idea that Trump himself is a Russian agent. Remember that era in the distant foggy past of five years ago? Back to Politico. When Trump spoke about Obama, he sounded personally irritated, which may have been because the White House had ignored his offer to lead the federal response to the 2010 Gulf of Mexico oil spill because the admiral in charge doesn't know what he's doing. End quote. The Politico reporter sort of skips over the 2010 oil spill, also known as the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, the worst industrial accident in American history. Oil kept pumping out for five months. The reason this happened is that the Federal Minerals Management Service began skipping monthly inspections. Inspectors were given personal gifts by the oil company and were also wine, dined, and sent to strip clubs. The rate of inspections under Obama fell dramatically. The Deepwater Horizon hadn't had a safety inspection for seven years. This, uh, this takes us back to the administration of the hapless George W. Bush. Worse than Bush, Obama allowed drilling without permits. And Democrats say that Trump is the most corrupt president in American history. 
Funny people. We're back on track for a Trump landslide in November. Remember what I told you? There will be no black swans for Donald Trump. He was hit with two catastrophic black swans in the form of a pandemic and the total shutdown of the economy. And he beat them both without breaking a sweat. And one more thing before I go back to Politico. The new hotness is two attention-seeking American doctors saying that we overreacted to the coronavirus and that the proof is, sim is empty hospitals. Put this in your pipes and smoke it, docs. Worst case scenario has hit Sweden, which took the route you recommend. Half the staff of a hospital is now infected. Sweden already had a massive shortage of hospital staff. Now the hospitals are infecting people and they can't even treat COVID-19 patients anymore. We did the right thing. Stop bitching and get ready to reopen. Back to Politico. Quote, there is tremendous, this is quote, quoting Trump. There is tremendous dishonesty, tremendous dishonesty in the press, he volunteered, naming certain journalists, including Timothy L. O'Brien and Wayne Barrett, both prominent Trump critics, as chief offenders. I believed in the press. And when this guy Barrett wrote this way, I realized, wow, we've got a different situation than I thought. This is not an honest business. In my case, he doubts we'll be meeting in court. It'll probably be a bad book, and I'll regret doing it, but okay, I could sue you if it's bad, but I won't bother because the book won't sell. People want positive, inspiring. That's what you should write if you want a success. End quote. I have to admit that the title of the book, Never Enough, told me that reading it would be a waste of time. Michael D'Antonio thinks that Trump ran for president because Trump's wealth, power, and fame weren't enough. So I knew that the book missed the mark. Quote from the article in Politico, Donald Trump's psychiatric status is an overarching question that writers and filmmakers and even psychologists have long tried to answer. Trump was offered a journalist's paragon of narcissism at least as far back as 1988. Many recent books about narcissism echo Christopher Lash's landmark Culture of Narcissism, 1979, a lament that would have us place Trump in an age of diminishing expectations, end quote. Hogwash. Trump won and will win again because people have higher expectations than ever. It's crystal clear. Quote, Lash saw an epidemic of self-involvement emerging as young adults with a weak sense of identity sought continual affirmation in attention, material comforts, and exciting experiences. What Lash feared, Donald Trump lived with more verve than anyone else on this planet. Others may have matched him in one category, such as fame, but no one equaled him on all three levels of narcissistic achievement." End quote. This is the association fallacy. Hitler had a mustache, Einstein had a mustache, therefore Einstein is Hitler. The psychological analyses of Trump are based entirely on surface characteristics, such as appearance, his lifestyle, and mostly his words. Not a single expert gives a nanosecond of thought to the possibility that Trump is deliberately misleading them. I evaluate Trump entirely by his actions. The idea that he is a pathological narcissist is laughably childish. Too many people are envious. I don't feel envy. Quote, he has a compulsive effort to present and have others accept his view of himself and the world he inhabits does. How in the name of Gefrudenlich does a writer for Politico know which people are compulsive and which aren't? It's a surface analysis. Leftists don't admit to the existence of outliers, and Trump is the greatest outlier in human history. Quote, Few understood the psychological background to his pursuit for Trump, who is, by his own estimate, the same person he was as a needy child. There would never be enough power, attention, or wealth. End quote. Ridiculous. The only profile that matters is the New York Times profile from 1984. It tells you everything you need to know about Donald Trump. He's under attack more than at any time in his life. Think about this. The federal government and intelligence community conspired to destroy him. 
Let me tell you the defining characteristic of genuine narcissists. They instantly crack under pressure. Does Trump seem even slightly stressed to you? No human being has had to face outrageous accusations spoken directly to him on a daily basis by rabid mental patients devolving into more primitive forms right before our very eyes. He's being accused of mass murdering people, his own people, for profit. A real narcissist is fragile. Trump is a fucking rock. Every single day he comes out and says, is this all you got? Trump landslide in November. Watch it happen.